Ciao Corona Geeks! Today I'm super excited because I'm bringing to you a traditional Italian recipe from an Italian guy, the Arancina Palermitana. Yes, that's right, you heard correctly. The real pronunciation here is Arancina and not Arancini as we all say in the US, especially when you talk about this great recipe from the island of Sicily and in particular from Palermo. Let's check it out. Alright, making the arancina siciliana is not easy. It takes a little bit of time and that like involves few preparation. I just made for myself a vegetable broth with a little bit of celery, carrot, onion, garlic, and a nice little bit of olive oil, some spices. You can do, make yourself, it's better, I like more, or you can just buy a vegetable broth. We're gonna use vegetable broth in two things. One is in this tomato sauce and also for cooking the rice. Super easy. I'm gonna start with celery. I'm gonna cut this celery in half and then in cubes real quick. I'm gonna do the same with carrots. I'm just gonna use half of my onion. All right, I just mix it up. My carrots, celery and onion. This will be my base for the thick tomato sauce that we're making for our arancina. I'm gonna start with half of a dried chili pepper. I'm gonna take out the seeds inside. We don't want super, super strong. I'm gonna have the full piece here because we're gonna take it out as soon as the oil has the flavor that we need. I have also here a couple of garlic cloves that I'm gonna use, so very easy. I'm gonna use Sicilian extra virgin olive oil in order this recipe. I'm gonna start to fry a little bit my garlic cloves and this piece. So we are infusing the flavor inside of our olive oil. I have infused my oil and I'm gonna take the garlic out with my tongs and the chili pepper out. Boom. And I'm gonna use my paste. All right, so my nice paste is cooked. It's been cooking for about four minutes. And now I'm gonna add my meat. I have two meat here. Simple, a tough beef that I just have mixed it up. And I'm gonna add in. And then I'm gonna add Sausage, this is the inside of the sausage. What I did is like fresh sausage. I just opened the casing in half and take out the meat. So this is gonna be very rich, luxurious. Now I'm gonna cook the meat. And I want a lot of separation between the meat. So I'm gonna try to cut with my spatula. My meat has been cooking for about 20 minutes. It's nice, all the juice is gone. So it's kind of getting dry. And now it's getting dry. I'm gonna add about a quarter of glass of red wine. Now we need to wait the, the evaporation of the alcohol content inside my Pinot Noir. So we need to wait a couple minutes. Super easy. You can easily smell the alcohol flavor. If you don't smell any more alcohol, it's, it's good. All right. My alcohol has evaporated. It's perfect. It's like a nice mix. It's getting super yummy. It smells delicious. I'm gonna add bay leaf, a couple of bay leaf. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, sea salt, just a pinch. We can always check it out less later, so. Okay, now I'm gonna add, after the salt, I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. Nice. We can always add later so we can test it out. Get a nice mix. And now here, a little bit of a differentiator that makes this a sauce for the arancina. I'm gonna add a touch of cinnamon, half teaspoon in. And now I'm gonna add a touch of fresh nutmeg. I love the smell of nutmegs. Now I'm gonna add a tablespoon, a full tablespoon of double concentrate of tomato. I'm gonna add a second tablespoon of double concentrate of tomato. I want the, all this flavor to get all together nicely. Now everything is nice and well incorporated. Now what I'm gonna do is very simple. I'm gonna add fresh peas in. This is very, very characteristic of the filling of the arancina. Now I'm gonna add my vegetable broth that I mentioned at the beginning. I'm gonna use a couple of vegetable broth. We want the vegetable broth to cover up my sauce. I need my meat to simmer inside this mix of spices and our vegetable broth for about 90 minutes. It has to simmer a really, really low temperature and has to get a kind of like paste. We want this paste to work together with as a filling for our arancina and this will be not too much liquid. Meanwhile, my meat filling is simmering and cooking. 
I'm gonna prepare the rice. All right, so I have here a couple of cups of arbora rice and I'm just toasting it. I've been toasting the rice for about a couple of minutes. Can you see that? Perfect. So the rice is toasted and now I'm gonna add my vegetable broth. So I'm gonna add one cup here. All right, I have added a couple of vegetable broth just in here, the one that I made at the beginning. And um, as you can see, the rice is absorbing this. Now, so what we're gonna do is very easy. We're gonna cook this rice for 18 minutes and we're gonna add step by step our vegetable broth. The vegetable broth is nice and hot, it has to be like on boiling point. And as soon as we see that the rice absorbing it, we're gonna add it. So I just try to remind me to fill in from the pan inside here bowl. And what we want to do is like, we want to take out the bay leaves and then we want to check it out about salt and pepper if we feel like it's good enough. You can see it is juicy, but it has to be pretty firm because it goes inside our rice bowl. Now, the best and the traditional way is to place this in the fridge overnight. Um, I'm gonna do the same because I'm gonna do the same also with my, my rice. So you want to keep into the fridge overnight and then gets the day after. So with five minutes to go on my risotto, I'm gonna add the saffron with everything in. I want all my rice to become nice and yellow. So the color of the risotto with the saffron is, is amazing. Now I'm gonna cook the risotto for another five minutes. And when it's ready, I'm gonna place the risotto in the fridge and, and be ready for assemble my arancine. Finally, the moment then we're gonna shape this fantastic arancine siciliane. Our rice is very cold, it's been out for a few hours, our filling as well. So the meat is kind of like compact now, it's gonna be kind of easier to work through. It's gonna be super easy, so we need a rice filling inside. We pass through a mix of 1-1 water and flour, and then the bread cam. So this is called pastella in Italian, you know, pretty easy, nothing super special. Traditionally, you shape by hand, but I found this amazing tool, the arancinotto, that is like, it's like pretty cool. So I bought two shapes. I'm gonna experiment with this. I'm gonna drop for you a link down below to buy straight from Amazon if you want to experiment with this, this tool to make the arancini. First off, the base. Then there's a cover and there's a help for the filler. I'm gonna spray a little bit of oil on my hand, the rice. Nice. Then I should put the filler. Top. Create a hole. In. And then use my filling. And then it is safe to use a little bit more rice to cover the top. And then this top goes here to press it. Nice. Then we'll put it Wow, look at that. This looks crazy good. Those look absolutely <laughs> outstanding. This is like the classic shapes that you can find in Sicily. I'm gonna pre my air fry 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is, everything's already cooked, so we just need to get the nice crispiness outside. We need to have the last passage here, which is the pastella and the breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna take one of this, secure your shape, put inside the pastella. Off the axis, and then in the breadcrumbs. All right, Corner Geeks, the arancinotto was an absolute success. Look at this. Shapes is perfect. While again, my fry is very hot, the breadcrumbs will sit on this nice, super cool shaped arancine. And we're gonna cook for about eight minutes, I would say. We want like the crispiness and the golden brown color that we're looking as they will be fried. As I'm saying lately, don't use right now the oil. I think the best way to do 
is placing the air fryer for the first four minutes and then only later we're gonna add, add, apply some oil to get that golden and fried sensation that we need in this case. They look awesome. All right, guys, I have here the first two. They look amazing. This is slightly, like, you know, break. Just slightly, slightly. I think I have to wait a little bit more. The suggestion is always that after you ship, you, you store in the fridge for about 20, 25 minutes before frying. In the air fryer, I think it's, it's gonna be the same since the timing is pretty late in the night. So I just rush it through. So in order to do the energy here, you have to wait. You kind of like on warmish side, not that hot. So you need to wait, it gets like nice and you know, easy to handle like this. They look awesome. The smell is, is amazing. They look definitely very similar, like fried, you know, perfect look. We're gonna cut one inside and I'm gonna show to you I mean, look at this, this off is perfection. In the middle, the rice, the looks amazing. I'm very, very happy, extremely happy with the results that we're getting. This is perfection. Perfect. Let's give it a bite. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. And while I'm cooking the other in the air fryer, I have to say this is, was an absolute success. Italy in the air fryer, Sicily in the air fryer. This is the perfect street food. It's an amazing concentrate of flavor and complexity. The rice, the saffron, the bay leaf, the, the, the sweetness of the cinnamon, the sourness, the acidity of the tomato, uh, the peas. It's so amazing. It's an explosion of flavor. I'm so happy that I, I did this. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more fire recipe, more Italian recipe into the air fryer, or if you're simply curious about air frying. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next.